Joining us with more on the busy day in Washington is political reporter Shira Tuplett. Shira, good morning to you. Good morning to you, too. Thank you for having me. A pleasure to have you here this morning. Let's talk about that tax deal. It received overwhelming support in the Senate. What's going to happen in the House? Well, that's the big question right now is what's going to happen in the House, because right now there are people on the right of the political spectrum and on the left of the political spectrum who are pretty angry about this bill. House Democrats, as we know from last week, uh, basically rejected it. And a lot of Republicans, especially very conservative Republicans, are concerned because of the major price tag that comes with this bill. It's supposed to cost $850 billion, and that money is not paid for. So while, not, you, while you're talking about the money there, Cher, is there anyone on Capitol Hill right now that's saying, wait a minute, are we defeating the purpose here? Yes, there are certainly voices, especially conservative Republicans, who are very concerned about the price tag associated with this tax cut bill. And if you look at the senators who voted against the bill, all the Republican senators who voted against the bill in the Senate today, and again, just a handful of them, their reasons were very simply, we cannot add to the deficit this much. And we've started to hear voices in the House uh, from members and from very conservative districts and members who are known to be very conservative, and they're also very concerned about how much of a, a blow this would be to the deficit. Well, let's switch gears here and talk about health care for a second. The president got a blow Monday from a judge in Virginia. He declared the health care law unconstitutional. How much of a setback is this to the administration? You know, it was a, a minor setback and also a major setback because everyone knows this case is probably going to end up in the Supreme Court eventually, just given the high profile of it all. And it's just, it's basically inevitable that it'll end up in the Supreme Court. But this was very notable because out of the 15 lawsuits that have been brought and opined by judges across the country, this is the only one in which the White House has not had a favorable ruling. Yesterday, we saw the first meeting of a group called No Labels. We don't want to label them here, certainly, but that group was made up of politicians from both parties. Their goal was to get out of partisan politics, and they say, seek some practical solutions to government. Is this the rise of a third party? You know, I, th I thought that group was a, a very interesting and notable, mostly because of all the people who were supporting it. Uh, these are Republicans and Democrats who are known to be more moderate. So I think that gave this uh, new group a lot of heft right out of the gates. On the other hand, you know, I think there have been a voices, a moderate voices for you know, years now, decades now, trying to push this cause in the House. So basically, same song, different tune. And before I let you go this morning, Richard Holbrook, of course, passed away on Monday. He was President mm -hmm. Obama's special envoy to Afghanistan and Pakistan. How much of an impact will his death have on U.S. diplomacy in Afghanistan and Pakistan? I think in short term, certainly it will have an impact. Uh, his death was rather sudden, and obviously it's very tragic. Um, but he only fell ill less than a week ago, and I think it's still reverberating through the State Department right now how to go on without him, given how sudden his death was. Shira Tuplitz from Politico. Shira, thank you so much for your insight this morning. Appreciate you joining us. Thanks for having me.